So now we are going to talk about so-called self-diffusion, diffusion of atoms even in a so-called pure system, single element system, and swell and so-called vacancy diffusion, a diffusion of vacancy. Okay. First, let's look at so-called self-diffusion. We have a pure element of A. Self-diffusion, pure element of A. And what do we do? People say they are going to introduce radioactive atoms, isotope, A star. Still, element A, but A star means it's an isotope that is radioactive. Radioactive means it uh, emit uh, radiation so that it's slightly different from the most stable isotope so that you can distinguish them by some technique. Okay, but chemically A star and A are the pretty similar. And atom size are pretty similar. The difference is the number of neutrons within the atom. Make sense? And how do you introduce quite often you ion implantation, something like that? You put locally some radioactive tracer element of A star, okay, into the material. And uh, self-diffusion over time, as we learned before, the atoms will not sit still, they are going to this radioactive atom will diffuse out, will randomly work away, right? It will randomly work away. Initially I put at the center it's going to randomly work away. Okay. And uh, let's say we have a radioactive technique that can detect how far away these radioactive traces spread out over time. We are going to measure the so called penetration the concentration profile over time. Okay, suppose we have that technique. And of course, from we can assume the A star and A, the radioactive isotope and the stable isotope, these two are chemically identical. Kind of their valence and all that stuff that determined by the number of proton within the nucleus or the electron are the same. The only thing different is the number of neutrons. Okay, and they should be A star and A naturally, as you can imagine, same size because their electron configuration would be the same. The neutron within the nucleus is not going to influence their size much. Okay, so as a result, do you see that when this so-called radioactive tracer, when this guy diffuses, it's kind of going go through so-called substitutional diffusion, but in specifically going through the so-called vacancy mechanism. Why not interstitial? Because A and A star are same size. It's difficult for A star to fit into the interstitial. So they're most likely they are going through the so-called vacancy mechanism from one location to a nearby location. Okay. And then for, again, within this class. It's about the model building. You saw from previous, by making very simple model, we can, assi we can assign so-called diffusion lens from an atom jumping point of view on average. Here we assume what? A and A star have the same jumping frequency, successful jumping frequency. Make sense? Whether it's atom A or whether it's radioactive isotope, they should have the same successful jumping frequency. Makes sense, right? And it's kind of okay, makes sense. The other one is the atom for each of the jump, it seems to forget about its history. Which means, as I have written here, each jump is unrelated to its previous jump. Despite, despite what? It's jumping actually into a Vacancy. This approximation is, I have to say, is a severe defect in this model. Most likely, as you can imagine, when A star comes towards the right side, the next step most possibly for A star to go is well. Most likely. Most likely. If A star goes from left to right, the next step for this guy to go, most likely is go well. Jumping backward, right? Most likely. But for simplicity. You see that it's about building model. For simplicity, let's assume, okay, once it jumps to the new location, everything got equilibrium again, and then start to jump. And see if it forgets it got a neighboring vacancies here. You see this assumption? 
Not a perfect assumption, but it's reasonable if we assume the vacancy moves fast. Make sense? Otherwise, if vacancy moves slow, that's only one way for this guy to go. Make sense? But let's, for simplicity, it's forget where that vacancy is. That vacancy quickly goes away. Now it makes sense, right? Now it, it's waiting for another vacancy to appear and then jump. That's the assumption. Very, very important. We make assumption. You build model to simplify that you have to make some assumption. Otherwise, it becomes mathematically impossible to treat. Okay? And once we have this, the we still assume, even though it is not interstitial diffusion, even though we said it's vacancy diffusion, it is substitutional diffusion by the vacancy magnet, we still assume that e equation holds. 1 over 6, gamma. What is gamma? Successful jumping frequency. What is alpha? Jumping distance. Let's assume this equation still roughly holds, except the gamma, we need some consideration. The jumping distance is clear, right? From one location to the next location, jumping distance is very clear. It's the gamma, the successful, so-called successful jumping frequency term, needs some consideration. What is that? Okay. So a successful jumping frequency, as you see, we have that uh, one location, the next location, oh, between them, there should be a so-called energy barrier, right? And that energy barrier we said is that uh, GM. So for its jump to be successful, for a radioactive atom to jump to the neighboring location, it needs definitely needs what? Thermal activation. If, if we are at 0k, no jump. Make sense? So we need a thermal vibration frequency. Every atom is vibrating at its location. Thermal vibration. Okay? Not only thermal vibration, some of them need to have the energy higher, kinetic energy higher than what? The barrier. Or the certain portion of the atom have the energy higher than this equilibrium by your barrier. Make sense? What's the probability for atom to have that uh, higher than equilibrium kinetic energy? It is given by this one. Boltzmann distribution. Delta GM. What does delta GM mean? The so-called uh, energy barrier height from the peak to the valley. Okay? So this one gives uh, our probability for atom to have that high kinetic energy, which means it can overcome, at, at least kinetically, it can overcome the barrier. Okay? And we said because this is so-called substitutional diffusion through vacancy magnet, for atom, for that A star to jump to the neighboring location, it needs that one of the neighboring location to be vacant. Otherwise, if everybody else is fully packed, it has, even though its kinetic energy is high, it just cannot go. Make sense? Go up, it will slow down. Uh, let's go down. So let's say the xv would be the so-called molar fraction. Molar fraction of vacancy within the material. It means the same thing as for any given side, the probability for that side to be vacant. Okay? So now we after we have these two considerations of a successful jump. A successful jump depends on thermal vibration, depends on kinetic energy. A successful jump also depends on I have a missing item nearby, right? So these two together give us the successful jumping frequency. Gamma, the successful jumping frequency would be thermal mu for thermal vibration. It's always vibrating times the probability for that vibration to have a kinetic energy higher than the barrier times xv means the neighboring side to be vacant. That has a probability. Not a high probability, a low probability. Make sense? And we put all these together. 
of course we put x mu together uh, x v together with mu times a exponential term and if we say the vacancy is in thermodynamic equilibrium which means okay the number of concentration or the fraction of vacancy is determined by the temperature alone we are going to have the vacancy molar fraction is given by exponential term of delta gv divided by rt what does delta gv mean delta gv means the amount of energy gives free energy that is required quite often a positive number you need energy you are when you create a vacancy you are breaking so-called bonds you need to spend energy and that energy determines the probability of the concentration for the vacancy that a gv here is a positive number you need to spend energy to get a vacancy and that determines a side what's the probability for that side to be weakened it's given similar by a boltzmann and type of distribution r which means it's for one mole of vacancy of course it's probably not that high okay and then we're going to have that's what we said okay we assume the diffusion coefficient still holds this shape diffusion coefficient 1 over 6 gamma alpha square gamma is our successful jumping frequency we said is mu thermal vibration frequency times probability of a site to be vacant times the probability of overcoming the energy barrier and then what is xv xv we said is the thermal vacancy fraction which is given by the <coughs> vacancy formation energy exponential term so we put it together the so-called self diffusion coefficient we're going to write it down here one over six we keep within here this whole thing mu this whole thing would be our gamma and alpha square we keep right this whole thing mu is here xv what is xv it's this term and uh, this term is the probability of overcoming the kinetic energy and what did we do we put mu and uh, alpha together right and then exponential exponential minus minus we add them up <coughs> together do you see that and then from delta g we go from delta g to entropy term and for that entropy term the temperature would be cancelled out plus times this term which we call enthalpy term the heat term <coughs> for a atom now we are lo not looking at the interstitial we are looking at uh, the solvent or the matrix atom okay this one if we put all these things together this term doesn't really within what i'm illustrating the exponential of entropy term doesn't really depend on temperature the mu we said weakly depend on temperature not too much so if we still follow what we did before define so-called frequency factor we lump all these together into d0 from 1 over 6 all the way to here lumped together into d0 they have almost no dependence on temperature that's our so-called pre-exponential term or frequency factor and then the substitutional diffusion activation energy if we define as this enthalpy term added up together substitution sd for substitutional diffusion is delta hm the heat in terms of that barrier plus delta hv the heat for creating the vacancy then our we would have a similar expression of self diffusion coefficient da a not for salute it's for the solvent for itself d0 times a quote unquote 
quote unquote exponential term that depends on the substitutional activation energy. Okay. This one we kind of we are gonna get the diffusion coefficient for self diffusion. We are kind of using the radioactive tracer, but in the end we kind of dropped it because it as you can imagine it would be the same for whether it's the stable isotope or the radioactive isotope. It's a representation of this self diffusion coefficient. It has a similar formality. It has the same format as what? Interstitial diffusion. It's the pre-exponential term or frequency term times a exponential term. Okay?